It was early December. I was at home this night, spending my day off inside by the fireplace. It was way too cold and snowy out for my liking. I did a bunch of things around the house that needed to get done, but otherwise, it was a relaxing day. I had the news running in the background, listening to how high winds and possible blizzards were to be expected starting tonight. By five, I was already starting to notice it getting worse outside. I sat on the couch and turned on a different channel. Around seven though, I could hear wind slamming against the house and it really did sound like there was a blizzard. I got up and went to the window facing the backyard to see how it looked outside. At first, all I saw was snow rushing to the ground with almost no visibility. But then I saw something else. A figure walking through my backyard. My backyard was pretty big and didn't have a fence, so it wouldn't have been that unexpected if it weren't for the blizzard going on outside. Whoever was out there was just walking at a regular pace, going toward the end of my yard, before the snow and darkness took over any sight I had of them. I stayed by the window for a minute, trying to catch one more look and figure out what they were doing, but I didn't see anything. I was honestly scared for them, but also couldn't see why they'd be out there at all. The end of my yard that they were walking to led to a road, but it wouldn't get them anywhere for miles, which was not doable on foot. I went back to the TV, but I still couldn't help thinking about it. And only five minutes later, there was a knock at the door. I went over and cracked it open. It was a man in a heavy winter jacket. His nose was bright red and his face was pale white, like he'd been out in the cold for a while. I couldn't know if this was the same person I'd seen in my backyard, but my immediate guess was that it was. How could I help you? I asked. The man let out a humble smile and spoke through shaking teeth that he was waiting for a ride to pick him up and asked if he could stay in my house for a few minutes to shelter from the cold just until the ride got here. I took a moment to respond because I actually considered it given the state of the weather. It's easy to say that under no circumstance would you let a random man inside your house, but when they're practically freezing to death on your doorstep and asking for your health, the answer on what to do isn't as black and white. I told him he could wait on my porch which had an overhang that blocked the snow and offered to give him an old jacket of mine if he needed it. The man didn't look too happy, but just nodded and went off to the side and sat on the chair I had out there. I closed and locked the door, then went upstairs to grab my old jacket. It was way too big for me and was in horrible condition, but obviously that shouldn't matter in this kind of scenario. I picked it up and walked downstairs, about to unlock the door and open it, but something stopped me just a moment before. I don't know what it was but it made me hesitate. I leaned over and looked through the peephole. The man was now standing right up against the door with his hand on the handle like he was preparing to push it open as soon as I unlocked it. I felt my heart rate increasing as I took a couple steps back and quietly pulled my phone out to dial 911. As I whispered into the phone, I just stared at the door with wide eyes, knowing what was waiting for me on the other side. Once the police said they were on their way, I slowly crept over and looked out again. The man wasn't there, not on my porch or anywhere in my front yard. He was just gone, like he knew that I had called the police. Nothing else was found that night and no signs of him ever showed up again. What he would have done if I had opened the door, I can't be sure of, but hopefully he never comes back. I was visiting my family for the holidays last year. They live 15 hours away, 
and I usually try to tough it out in one long drive, but this year's snow had come early and made driving a lot slower, so I was prepared to stop at a hotel somewhere along the way. I didn't book anything in advance since I didn't know how far I'd get before wanting to stop. I was just going to pull into wherever and see if they had a room available. When I left, it was barely snowing, but the further out I got, the more snow seemed to be coming down. Roads were still clear, but everyone was definitely driving more slow and carefully. Around eight hours into the drive, I still hadn't made it halfway there. I was getting frustrated as it was already 9 p.m. and it was just taking so long. I should have been over halfway there at this point, but now I felt like I had to keep going so that my drive tomorrow wouldn't be even longer. The snow had let up a little bit, but it still had accumulated on the road because there were no plow trucks. I drove as long as I could, making it to 12 a.m. before deciding I'd had enough and needed some sleep. I pulled off the next exit and into a small motel parking lot. It was a long, one-story building with ten or so rooms. As expected, it wasn't the nicest looking place. The outside looked really old, and even the lights on the sign were dim and half burnt out. I parked in a random place near the rooms and got out, walking up to the main entrance area. Inside, it was a very small room with a front desk, but there was a sign propped up on the counter. It said, be back in 15, with a little picture of a coffee cup on it. The chances of me arriving while the worker was taking their break just showed my lack of luck on this drive. I walked out and back to my car, but this time, when I looked around the parking lot, I noticed something that I hadn't before. It was completely empty. I stood there in the cold and looked for a minute and didn't see a single car. And from the looks of it, it didn't look like any cars had even been in the parking lot tonight. I got back in my car and turned on the heat to warm up while I waited. Seeing no cars and nobody at the desk had me second guessing whether the sign was actually for someone taking a break. There were no places within 15 minutes anyway, so I don't know where they could have driven off to if they were taking a break. I sat back and tried to think of what to do next, but my eyes and head were so tired and I ended up passing out in my seat. When I woke up, a few hours must have passed. The snow had started pouring down again and the wind was making my car sway. I sat up and looked toward the front entrance of the motel, but immediately made eye contact with a man peering in through my window. I jolted back as he stepped away and yelled something toward the parking lot. I looked behind him, seeing a truck on the other side. Another man got out of the driver's side and started walking up. The one by me then walked around my car, trying all the door handles. I snapped out of it and put my car in reverse, trying to back out, before the wheels spun under me. Now the men were moving quicker, one yelling at the other to come over to his side and break the back window. I continued moving my car back and forth, trying to get through the thick patch of snow, but the sudden shattering of the back window only made it harder. I was trying everything now, as one of the men was reaching in for the door handle, and just when he put half of his body through the window and opened the door, I finally got traction and spun the car around. The man fell out, and the other tried to get in his truck to follow me as I turned the car and made my way out of the parking lot. Once I was back on the road, though, they stopped following me. Although I don't feel like it was entirely my fault, I definitely should have not let myself fall asleep in that parking lot especially in the middle of nowhere like that. What those men had planned could have been anything. They were obviously prepared though, and it almost seemed like they knew that this motel parking lot was an easy place to target people. But whatever it was, I'll probably never know.
for the past couple years, I've worked on Uber Eats during winter break. College lets out for a whole month, and Uber Eats is the easiest work to do without having to go through job interviews and all that stuff. Besides, I didn't work during school, so this was something simple to pick up on the holidays. It was a few weeks out from Christmas when this happened. This night, it was snowing pretty heavily, but I really couldn't be picky with what days to work since I only had this set amount of time off to make enough money to last until the next break. I borrowed my dad's pickup truck and started driving. The snow must have kept a lot of other drivers home because I was getting orders all night. Big ones too, the kind that pay a lot. I did this for probably a good three hours and then an order came in to pick up from a drive through place. The house was 20 minutes from me, but the tip and everything was really good. There honestly wasn't anything unusual or off about this order. It was just as any other was. I picked it up and went on my way to the house. From a quick look at the map, it looked like it was in a pretty nice neighborhood on the other side of the county. I'd been around there before, but not really inside the neighborhoods. By this time, it was 11 p.m., and a lot of snow had started to stack up on the roads. I was also getting tired, so I agreed with myself that this would be the last delivery, and then I'd go home and work again tomorrow. Once I got to the neighborhood, I drove through the street and looked at the houses as I passed by. They were all huge and had a ton of land between each of them, but none of the houses seemed to be very new. They had that typical older mansion style of basically just being really large and nothing else. Anyway, it took a while to get to the address I was supposed to deliver to. The driveway was covered in at least a foot of snow, so I parked on the road. While I got out and walked up to the house, getting snow all over my pants and shoes, I noticed no lights were on in the windows and there was a piece of paper taped to the front door. Once I got up to the porch, I took a closer look. On the top of the page, it said notice in big red font, and the first few lines stated it was issued by the county. But before I got too far in, I heard footsteps crunching in the snow behind me. I turned around, seeing a man approaching me coming from around the garage. He had a short buzz cut and was wearing a dirty jacket. Just dropping off your order, I said to break the silence, but the man continued walking up without saying anything. Once he was a few feet away, I could tell there was something off about him. I guess it was just a gut feeling. He looked at me with cold and tired eyes, then held his hand out for the bag. I reached over and gave it to him, but he didn't move. He was standing right on the path leading to the driveway and as the seconds passed, I realized how completely strange it was for him to even be out here, and even more so that he wasn't heading inside now that he had the bag. Have a good night, sir, I said, stepping to the side and starting to walk past him. The man stayed where he was before abruptly turning, and in the corner of my eye, it looked like he swung his arm out as if trying to grab me. I stumbled back and faced him as he began stepping toward me, saying, come with me, while reaching his hand out. I kept moving back as fast as I could in the thick snow, and the man continued to chase me, yelling at me to stop running. Once I got a good footing, I was able to outrun him and get in my car, backing out before he even had the chance to get to me. As I drove off, I looked in my mirror and saw the man standing in the driveway and just watching. I called the cops once I was out of the neighborhood, but the man was already gone. Later that night though, they told me that the house wasn't currently owned by anyone at the moment, which I assumed the note on the door had something to do with. What the man was trying to do is unknown but that whole situation has put me on edge whenever I pull up to a house with all their lights off, wondering if it might be the same man.